Thank you so much for joining us today. We are a nonprofit organization that helps family members and loved ones who have someone in their life with emotion dysregulation or borderline personality disorder. We do this through advocacy efforts, outreach, awareness, education, and research. We are widely known for our successful Family Connections program. Family Connection is a 12-week free class led by trained family members and clinicians. The purpose of Family Connection is to provide psychoeducation, skills, and support to improve one's relationship with their loved one who has BPD or emotion dysregulation. We offer Family Connections throughout the United States in person through Zoom and conference calls, and we are also in 28 countries around the world. Due to the coronavirus, we had to cancel many of our in-person classes, but many have been offered via Zoom technology. We're offering these webinars for people who've signed up to, for the in-person class that have been canceled or for those on our wait list, and for our friends who may have taken the class but need a refresher. I know many of you have forwarded questions to us regarding our topic today, interpersonal effectiveness. We will try and get to as many questions as possible. We will be answering questions in generalizations, not mentioning specific names or interactions. We ask that you post your questions in the Q&A and Allison, our presenter, has been kind enough to answer many of them at the end of this presentation. I'm joined today by Tina Moore, who is our manager of Family Connections, and by Allison, our presenter. Allison okay. is one of our beloved Family Connections leaders. She's also a teacher in Florida and recently went back to school to continue her education. Allison is one of those people who is constantly busy and always running, but always makes time for us and for Family Connections. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Allison. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'm really honored to be here. I love working with the NEA BPD. They were, I would say, the, the change in my life that I needed at the particular time in my life that I needed it. I have a 19-year-old daughter that has borderline personality disorder. And the first skill that I learned our DBT skill that I learned was Dear Man, and this is a skill that I love to teach in Family Connections. It is in the interpersonal effectiveness um, portion of DBT. So we're gonna talk today a little bit about Dear Man and the Give Fast skills. So especially in times of crisis, it's helpful to have a simplified format such as these two skills in our mind since at such times under pressure it's hard to be thoughtful and logical and come up with the most effective response and as many of you know that may have a friend family member loved one that has borderline personality disorder a lot of times the emotion escalates very quickly and it's very hard to think on your feet as to what is the right thing to say um, so today's skill is going to really help us to learn how to say no effectively or ask what you want effectively and still preserve that relationship and, and hopefully not have the escalation that some of us may have had in some of our um, interactions. Okay, Abby, you want to go to the next slide? Okay, so Marshall Linehan, who is, is the founder of DBT, really came up with three priorities. And the first one is objective effectiveness. And basically what that means is what we want, okay? The second was relationship effectiveness, which is how we want the person to feel about us. And then the third is self-respect effectiveness, which is how we feel about ourselves. Let me give you an example of how this works. And then we're going to apply this then to the dear man and give fast skill. So let's think of a simple problem. Maybe you may have a small child at home or a grandchild um, and you want to get them um, to get ready for bed, but they're maybe in the middle of playing video games or playing something and they don't want to stop that particular thing. So let's look at that problem in terms of these three things. 
So in terms of objective effectiveness, what we want in this particular situation is for our son or daughter, or granddaughter, grandson, et cetera, to um, stop what they're doing and get ready for bed. And maybe they have school the next day and, and you know it's really important for them uh, to do that. So what we want in this moment is for them to transition from playing to getting ready for bed. Okay, in terms of relationship effectiveness, we know that a child that's playing and in the middle of something doesn't necessarily want to stop in that moment uh, of what they're doing. So what we want to think about here is know that we still love this, this child, yet we still need them to get to do what we want. But we, we want them to know that we love them. And that's a really important in, in dealing with this problem. That would be the relationship part of it. Then the self-respect effectiveness is we know also that this could end in a battle, okay? And we don't want that to end in a battle because when we battle our kids, we get really worn out, okay? So what we want here is um, to preserve our own self-respect, not be worn out in this particular end and to get them uh, to do what we want. So if we put all three of these together, and we're going to tie this up at the end, but this is actually Dear Man and Give Fast, okay? So before we move into that skill, I, I want to give kind of a timely example, and then we're going to go through that particular example um, as to how do we use Dear Man and Give Fast um, to, to work through that. So the timely example is we all are dealing now with the coronavirus. Um, my 19-year-old daughter um, about a month ago was at school. She um, was told by, by the college that they were um, stopping all classes in person and they were going to go online. She was currently living in the dorm. So um, they had asked that all students that could safely go home that they um, that they do so. However, she chose to stay, or she wanted to still stay in the dorm because she lived, she works on campus. Um, just a little more information about that. The, the college that she goes to is only 20 minutes from where we live. So let's go to the next slide. So what, what we're looking at here is kind of how we're gonna use Dear Man and Give Fest. We, we have an issue here. And we're looking at how do you effectively say no, okay, or ask for what you want while still preserving the relationship. Well, I know that my daughter has borderline and she's not gonna take very nicely to me telling her that I would really like her to come home because it's really safer, okay? And no, I really don't want her to still stay in the dorm. So how can we approach this without, or how could I approach this? Now this particular conversation that I had with her was on the phone, but I've had many dear mans in person with her as well. But sometimes to practice this skill, um, if possible, it may be easier to do over the phone um, just so that you can look at the steps. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So basically what dear man is, the dear part of dear man is the guide to the initial discussion to get what you want. And the D stands for important things here. Okay, so the D stands for describe. And what you're supposed to do here is describe the situation. You wanna be clear, not too wordy, maybe two to three sentences, and you wanna describe just the facts. And I wanna shout out to my um, Family Connections co-leader, Maggie Brenner, she always says, just the facts, ma'am. And that's really important here. If you state just the facts, you leave, you leave the emotion part out of it. So in my particular instance, um, I described to her, your school has moved all of their classes online and encouraged all students to leave the dorms. And if possible, for you guys to go home, okay? And you're telling me, or you're communicating to me that you wish to still stay on campus um, because you work on campus and it's more convenient, and also that you, you like having your independence of living on your own. Um, I've also seen on the news that they're going to be 
issuing a shelter in place. And um, that's something we need to think about. So that's the describe. There's just factual information there, okay? Nothing to really, um, you know, arise from emotion there. The E part is express, okay? And here is where you want to express your feelings and opinions about the situation. Here is where you want to use what's called I statements. You want to use how you feel, not how the person should feel, okay? So you want to express your feelings. Um, so at this point, um, I would say to, to my daughter, it upsets me that you still want to stay in, in, in the dorm um, because I think it's safer for you to be at home, okay? And um, it really upsets me. And I'm also worried that that the college is going to further shut down things and you're not going to have resources to important things like food because you go to the cafeteria to get your food. So that's really expressing my feelings, okay? Well, as well as still expressing facts. And then the next thing is ask, okay? Um, and this is where you ask for what you want. What you need to remember here is that you need to be very clear about what you're asking for or what you're saying. They cannot read your mind, okay? So here I said, I would like you um, to come home um, until the university says it's really safe for you to be on campus. That's what I wanted, okay? So I asked her for what I wanted. The R stands for reinforce or reward, okay? And so what I back that up with is if you come home, we can be together all as a family which is really important to you. You get to sleep in your own bed, which you love, and you'll have three home cooked meals a day, which you, always, which you also miss while you're at school. So that kind of reinforces, you know, that we really want her to come home um, and that we really want her to be here. And the things that might be really good that are different than living in the dorm. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the man part is how do you actually do this and how do you guide your responses to their responses, okay? So this is, this is where the, the issue came up for me in the past. Before I learned Dear Man, I was just responding to emotion and yelling and increasing emotion over and over, almost to somebody that was enraged because I would say no to my daughter. And a lot of times it would be like I cut off her right arm and she would get very angry very quick. And then I would respond to that anger and yell back to her. When I learned dear man, the man part really helped me. And that, that part of it that helped me a lot is the M and the A. The M is, means being mindful. And that means being in the moment with that person. That means listening to what that person is saying and hearing what they're saying not thinking about what you're making for dinner, um, what's on your cell phone or who just texted you, but you're just in the moment with them, okay? Uh, and you're being mindful of yourself that you're not being judgmental with what they're saying, okay? You want to be very uh, mindful that you're stating just facts so that you don't arise their emotion, okay? So you're being mindful of all these things. Now, when you recognize that and they are kicking back and in the instance here, she was saying to me, well, I don't want to leave the dorm because if I come home, there's rules and I like living on my own and being independent. And she kept repeating that to me. And so I was mindful and I heard what she said and I responded to her with validation that says, I understand um, it's hard for you to give up your independence and it's no longer safe for you to live in the dorm, okay? I really stress here to use the word and instead of but, okay? Because and doesn't really give room to argue. If you say but, it's almost like you're hesitating. So I oftentimes try to be mindful to use the word and, okay? So she will say, mom, I'm fine. I wanna live in the dorm, I'm good. You know, it's close to work and, and, and so, then what I, I employed with, was a tool called Broken Record. Broken Record is a very effective tool. And so 
you don't have to justify why I said no or why I'm asking for what I asked for. All I simply have to do is say, it's no longer safe, okay? And it's no longer safe for you to be in the dorm. And she can say what she says, and I hear what she's saying, and I say, and it's no longer safe for you to be in the dorm, okay? And I continue to repeat that, okay? What that does is it's stating facts. It's not going to escalate that, and you still can validate what she's saying. But often, if you use that broken record a few times, sometimes when, they're, when their emotions are escalating, they can't hear you the first or second time. It's very effective to continue that, okay? One of the other pieces here is also the A part, the appearing confident. You want to appear confident in your voice your posture and your eye contact. And in particular with me, I was on the phone. I didn't want to seem like I was nervous. I wanted to have a firm voice, not aggressive, not angry, but just assertive, okay? In person, posture, okay? And make eye contact with them. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Appearing confident because then they, then they know that you mean what you say and you're not backing down. Okay, and it's not really about being right here. It's about preserving the relationship. Okay, and that's where the end comes in, the negotiate. I knew that she didn't want to come home and I desperately wanted her to come home because I knew the, the severity of the situation and I don't really think that, that she could understand that in that moment. Um, so really what I did was negotiate. And one of the things, one of the rules that she does not like that I have in my house is that I don't allow her to smoke in my home. She doesn't like that rule. So I said, you know what? If this is a game changer for you to come home, I'll allow you to do that, but you have to do it outside, which is my limit. And you have to take a shower when you come home so that no one in the house need, has to smell that, okay? And if I allow you to do that, would that make you feel better about coming home? That was a game changer for her. That was a negotiation that I was willing. And I want to say that I observed my limit, okay, which meant that the, I could tolerate that as long as it's not in my home. And I wasn't going to be resentful about that. Okay, so we did negotiate a little bit. Okay, you don't have to have a huge negotiation like that. Um, for me, the severity of the situation here. I thought it was necessary. You don't always have to negotiate, and there are things that cannot be negotiated in terms of this. So I don't want everybody to think that, that, that. But that's my particular example that's current. And then when we review, I'm going to give you one more example of how you might use this in a different situation. So that's dear man in, in a little bit, in, in um, a nutshell. Let's go and learn a little bit about give fast. Okay, so when you give fast, um, what that means is how you're going to accomplish dear man. Okay, and what give fast does is allow you to deliver dear man in a way that you would often talk with your best friend, not somebody that you're angry at or no, not somebody that you want to be aggressive with. This is a tool to remind you of how um, of tools that can help you to a maintain your own emotion um, and also be mindful of you want to preserve a relationship with this person okay so the first thing um, in give fast means be gentle okay you want to be moderate in your approach you don't want to be aggressive being aggressive is just gonna um, make that emotion rise. And that emotion can rise very quickly. So you want to do it in a gentle manner, um, you know, not with a yelling voice or an angry voice. Um, I is act interested. Um, you want to listen to the person without interrupting. This is so important with people with that have emotion dysregulation. They want to be heard and they don't want to be judged, okay? And if you can stop and pause and act interested and listen and be in that moment, be mindful of that, it's going to be a game changer for them, okay? Another game changer is V, which is validate. You need to acknowledge their feelings, how they feel about that situation. 
So in my situation, I validated my, my daughter's feelings that, that she valued her independence and that she didn't want to give that up. And I know that she feels very strongly about that because it's very important for her to be independent because she's um, becoming an adult. She is an adult and, and she wants that feeling, yet she still needs uh, me and my husband's support. Um, so I really wanted to validate that that's how she felt and, and that, um, but I also wanted her to know that there's a safety issue here. Okay. Um, you can always validate a feeling. Okay. Um, in this, this particular instance, I was validating her independence. Okay. And then, um, E is use an easy manner. Okay. And that just means talking like I'm talking with a soothing voice, okay? Not an angry voice. In our house, the humor part comes in that everybody in my house knows dear man. And my, and my kids know that I know dear man. I know they know dear man. And when they're asking for things and they're using this, I'll say, you just dear manned me. Or my daughter might say to me, mom, you just dear manned me. And that's kind of how we, we get um, a little humor out of this. You don't always have to put humor in, but sometimes it makes it a little easier and it makes them know that, you know, you're listening and you can have a little fun. It helps the relationship. Okay, let's go to fast, which is the other part of give fast. So um, this is the part that really preserves the relationship. We're going to go to the next slide. So the F is um, be fair. Okay. So you want to be fair to yourself and the other person. And, and being fair is listening to both sides. This is where being mindful is so important, you know, to, to let them not feel like they're being judged in any way. A is no apologies for making a request. Okay. You have a right to say no. You have a right to ask for what you want and you don't have to apologize for that. Okay, you don't have to justify. That's why the broken record is so effective. You didn't anywhere here when I did my dear man that I said, I'm sorry. I said, I understand, which validated her. Um, but I never apologized. And then the broken record made me, made it easier for me not to justify or get in this back and forth that's going to escalate her emotion. I, all I had to say is, and it's not safe for you to be in the dorm and it's factual, it's nothing that's going to, you know, make her emotion rise. S is really important. Stick to your own values and observe your limits. This is going to protect you from being resentful in the situation. So in my, my situation, I had to observe my limit. My limit is that I don't allow smoking in my house, okay? Um, and I'm able to tolerate I was able to tolerate it if she does it outside and I don't have to smell it, okay? And I'm not resentful about that at all. And if that's the game changer that's going to bring her home, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to negotiate that, okay? And I want to be clear here about observing your limits. And I know that there was another talk, but observing your limits means what you'll tolerate without being resentful versus setting a limit, which is not allowing someone to do something. So I often will say when my, my daughter kicks back on that is that is, you know, I'm observing my limit um, and she's aware of what that means. Um, and then T is be truthful. Don't lie or exaggerate. What I would say here is just to be your authentic self, not being sarcastic, um, not lying to get what you want, because a lot of times they'll see through that. And if they find out you were lying, it's going to lead to emotion dysregulation. So it's just being really authentic in the moment with that. So the give fast really allows you to do this in a gentle way. It's hard to say no. And I know that um, before I learned this skill that I had many battles in my house. And here's how it went most of the time. I would say no, um, she would rage and, you know, I would try to punish her. We would have more rage and sometimes we'd have three or four hours of rage. And I was like, how, how can 
I stopped this from happening. And again, the first time I went to um, family therapy, the therapist taught me this skill and it was a big game changer. And I'm going to say the first time I did this, did it work perfectly? Absolutely not. But you know what? I went back to it and I continue to go back to it. And it may be just bits and pieces. Sometimes the effective piece of Dear Man to me is the broken record. I go to that a lot. And it's really hard when you have emotions rising right in front of you to really think about, oh, Dear Man stands for this, 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 and this. But take bits and pieces of this um, to um, be able to that. Because when you're in that crisis situation, that person's right in front of you, it's difficult. Um, now, uh, what I will say, too, is that the person may still become emotionally dysregulated during this, okay? And what you can do is remember you're 50% of that transaction. What you can also choose to do is say, you know what? This is not going well right now. Why don't we discuss this when we both calm down a little bit, okay? Then you're telling them that you're not abandoning them. You're going to come back to that but you're realizing yourself that maybe your own emotions are rising and this is not a really good time to get into this. And that protects you from getting worn out, from getting sucked into that battle, which you're gonna walk away with not feeling very well and they're not gonna feel very well and the relationship really suffers there. So that's another piece to really realize that these skills do work and they're game changers but there are times when skills break down and you have to be the one that that realizes you know what my emotion is rising and they're triggering me i need to back away but it's always really important to tell them that you're going to be back okay um let's go to the next slide so i want to tie together a little bit about how did we talked about the three priorities that Marshall Linehan came up with at the beginning of the slide. So I'm going to tie those back to how those relate to Dear Man. So we first talked about objective effectiveness and how we do that is Dear Man, okay? How do we get what we want, okay? And in that first example that I gave you, I just wanted, um, you know, in that particular instance, my son or daughter just to get ready for bed. That's what I wanted. But we oftentimes have much more difficult um, situations that come up, such as the instance um, with safety, you know, with the, with the virus. Okay, I'm going to give you another example just because I, I think people learn much better when they have concrete examples of how this works. So I'm going to give you this. This is another example that I actually um, that I actually use when I teach family connections. And here is the background information of that. Okay, so um, my daughter was wanting an app for her phone. And at the time, we were limiting her apps um, because she was not able to um, control herself um, on the internet. So we would have to control the, the social media, et cetera. Um, and she would have to ask, either me or her father to download that. However, my husband was the one that actually would give her the password to download that. At this particular night, he was working upstairs and he wasn't available. And she came to me and says, mom, I need this app right now. And, um, you know, um, I want you to give it to me. And so that was kind of the, the situation that, that was at hand. And so I had to say to her, you know, um, you know, I told her the exact, you're telling me that you want this app. However, your dad right now is working up, upstairs. He cannot be disturbed because he's working. And, um, you know, when he's done, we'll ask him. And of course, she starts escalating right away. I have to have it right now. And she's starting to escalate. And because she's escalating, um, because of her impulsiveness, she also then starts asking for more. This is so stupid that I have to ask for um, you to download these apps. I should have unlimited access to the app store. Okay. And so she's putting one more level on me. Okay. So I had described to her 
what I heard her say, you know, that she wanted the app right now. And then I had to explain to her factually, her dad's upstairs working, he can't be disturbed. So we can't do it for right now. So the next step, which is the express, what I would say to her is I understand you're upset that you um, have to wait to get what you want. And I have told you, you can get the app, you just have to wait until dad stops working so he can do it. Okay, that's expressing my feelings of the situation right there. Okay, then A, okay, which is ask for what you want. Here's where I said, I ask that you please be patient and wait for your father to finish his work. Okay, we will be glad to download the app when he's done for you. Okay, so that's me asking her to be patient. That's the A, okay, or being assertive. Okay. And then R, reinforcing or what's her reward? Honey, you're going to get the app. If you're patient, you're absolutely going to get the app. Okay. You just have to wait until dad's done. It will, it will be available. Okay. At this time too, I'm realizing it's getting a little late and she has to go to school tomorrow. And I don't want this to get in a full blown argument. Okay. Um, so I am mindful that um, she's probably not going to get the app tonight because my husband's not going to finish before her bedtime. And I'm also mindful looking at her that she's really getting dysregulated. Um, so I take all of that into account and, um, you know, and she's yelling at, you know, yelling, getting a little nasty at this point. Um, so I say here in the moment, taking everything in, I'm sorry, but it's not negotiable right now to give you full access to the app store. Um, and your dad will be happy to download this app that you do want tomorrow. So that's addressing both that she wants access to the app store, um, full access, and also telling her, being mindful that she does want that app, okay? So she's gonna be like, well, I want everything. And she's kicking back to me a little bit. And that's when I use the broken record, okay? And here's what I say, your dad will be happy to download the game you want for you when he is available. And she might say, well, I want it now. Your dad will be happy to download the game for you when he is available, okay? And so it's going back and forth. Um, so here I had to appear confident. This one was in person. So I had to make eye contact with her so I got down at her level, looked her in the eye, put my shoulders back, not in an aggressive manner, okay, but made her know that I wasn't, you know, it was not negotiable for the one piece that she was act, asking for. And if she was just patient, she would get what she wanted, okay? So she knew that I wasn't going to back down and just say, oh, I'll go interrupt dad, okay? I didn't have to apologize for that. All I was doing is repeating your dad will be happy to download the game you want for when, for you when he's available, okay? So lastly um, is the negotiate, okay? So what I was not willing to negotiate here is that she had full access, and I've already said that, and I told her that and communicated to her about that. But at this point, I said to her, and I'm realizing the time, at this point it's late and your dad's still working and you need to go to bed. So if you leave your phone with me, I'll make sure he downloads it and it'll be available for you tomorrow. Is that acceptable to you? So that's negotiating with her that she is gonna get the app. Absolutely, that's not a, even a question, but she's just gotta be patient, okay? And at that point, she was a little tired of the dear man with the broken record and she said yes, okay? Even though at that point in time, she didn't like to give up her phone, okay? I said, I'm not gonna open your phone, I'll just have dad do that and we'll give it back to you in the morning. And that worked, okay? That could have gone a different way. She could have fully escalated, it could have gotten into um, a shouting match. And at that point, I could have recognized, stepped back and just said, you know what? I can see you're getting upset, I'm getting upset too. I think we need to both step back now um, you maybe you should get ready for bed and calm down. I'm gonna step back and then we'll come back and talk about this. Absolutely, okay? So 
that way I walked away from that, um, you know, the first example with, you know what, that worked out really well. Um, I wasn't resentful for that. She was happy she got what she wanted, she wanted, and we didn't have an escalation, which, which is the whole purpose of this communication tool. And this is a powerful communication skill, especially if it can keep the dysregulation um, down, okay? Because one of the issues that um, our loved ones that have borderline have is difficulty in interpersonal relationships. So this is a skill that really both helps them and both helps and helps us as well. So we can use this skill and they can use that skill. So if you both know the skill, it's even more effective. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so um, in tying this with the, the um, first slide that we did, the relationship effectiveness, how do we do that? That was one of the priorities. And how we do that is with give, okay? And, and give means, again, gentle, being gentle, interested, validating. Remember, validating what's valid. What they're, and, and I'll go back to the, the situations that I had. I validated that she wanted um, her independence, okay? I validated that she wanted the app, okay? Um, and that made it a little bit, because she knew that I heard her. I didn't judge her. I didn't say anything to her that said, you know, you're being um, very selfish to ask for all of this stuff. In no point did I do that, okay? And I did it in an easy manner. I didn't raise my voice. I recognized my own emotion, okay? And it went well. And if you can do that, you're gonna preserve that relationship. You're gonna both walk away with, you know what? It's not about winning or being right. It's about, you know what? We both got a little piece of what we want and there was no escalation. And that's a huge win. And for me, for many years, that was the biggest win for me, is not to have escalation or not having rage in my house for a day. So it's, it's baby steps with this. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, um, the last thing I wanna tell you is the self-respect effectiveness. And this is so important, especially for us as family members and friends, okay? Because what happens is the rage really scares us. It scared me for the, mo for the longest time. And I would back down and I would, I would let her exceed my limit. And then I'd walk away, I'd be angry and I'd be resentful. Okay, and I would get worn out when that happened over and over and over again. Okay, so this piece really helps you to preserve your self respect effectiveness, and it's important. Okay, we know what they are dealing with is so hard, but you're also important, and you're if and if you're not taking care of yourself and you're letting them beat you up and you're worn out, you're not going to be able to help them and be effective with them. So it's really important that you maintain your self-respect. Okay, so how do we do this? And this is the fast skill. Fairness, okay? That, you know, you are looking at both sides of the story, okay? You're not being judgmental, you're listening, okay? You're letting them be heard, you're not judging them, okay? They have a right to what they see, okay? Um, and I often, will say, your reality is different than my reality, but we can both be um, right at the same time, okay? That's the, that's the um, great thing about dialectics. Two people can be right at the same time, okay? The, the other part of this is apologies not needed, okay? You don't have to say you're sorry. You don't have to apologize for what, what you're for saying no or asking what you want. Use broken record to help you to not apologize because when you start apologizing that gives them that in that's going to escalate the situation because they're going to see that you're a little bit hesitant okay stick to your values is also important observing your limits and again remember those limits are what you are able to tolerate 
okay, without being resentful, okay? And that's so important because so many times I was so scared of what she was going to do or say that I would go way past my limits and I would be so angry for days. And now that I have this skill, it's really um, powerful to me that um, I can observe my limits and I can stick to my guns with that and still preserve the relationship with her, which are three things that are really important. The last thing is the truth. And I would just say, be your authentic self. No sarcasm, don't lie. Lies always come back. We know how we feel when they lie to us and that happens quite often. Um, but you know what? Be the role model, be the example. And this is what this skill also, it's modeling great communication skills. Okay, and um, in a nutshell, it's very effective. So it's a really good go-to um, if you don't know what to do in that situation. So you really have, and in summary, you really have two choices. Um, this works and you walk away and it's all great, or it doesn't work and you have that, and I call it the walk away skill. You can walk away, but just make sure you let them know you're coming back. I will open it up to questions now. Thank you so much, Allison. I know you're you. busy presenting and not watching this chat or the Q&A, but the responses have been phenomenal. Good. How calm you are and um, how informative <laughs> this has been. Um, I just want to make a quick um, Little two two quick announcements and then we'll get to questions. Sure. Um, the first announcement is we are a nonprofit organization and we're able to do these free webinars and family connections for free um, because people like you are generous and donate to us. So please support us. Our website is um, on this screen www.borderlinepersonalitydisorder.org and we thank you so much for all of your support and your help. And the other thing that I just want to mention briefly before we get to questions is we do have another webinar on Friday with Dr. Alan Frizzetti presenting. The correct time of the webinar is at 3 p.m. I know one of the advertisements that went out said 4 p.m., but the webinar is at 3 p.m. So Allison, here are some questions that have been coming through to you. Okay. Um, so I wanted, um, some people are asking us to give examples of when to use a deer man. So if you can give us a couple of examples, but also if you can just um, chime in about this, we often tell people to practice their skills um, in a work situation or um, without your loved one who is BPD at first, so you perfect the skills. So can you give us, when you give us some examples of when to use Dear Man, can you throw in an example or two of how you practice the skill in a you know normal, regu regular situation? Sure. Like in a work environment, maybe your boss asks you to, to do something and you want to say no. You can use it for that, okay? Also, maybe it's there's something that you need at work that you want you can ask them for that. So that would be like a work situation. Um, with a friend, okay? Maybe this is a friend that doesn't have BPD. Maybe your friend has stood you up um, for a couple of times you were gonna meet for coffee. It's, you know, asking them maybe to, to give you a little bit more notice than canceling at the last minute. So that's another way you could maybe ask for what you want. So those are easy ways to, to start with, you know, practicing on some, you know, before it gets into a really heated situation. Because, you know, if you're doing it with somebody at work, they're less likely to rage, <laughs> you know, and, and you're more likely to be able to practice the skill all the way through, if that makes sense. Allison, yeah. I have I have one for you. Sure. Um, so what if your dear man doesn't seem to be working? Do you have any ideas of um, timing? What timing? So, so work? yeah, and I kind of alluded to that. So I would say if you're seeing the escalation, you know, that's the mindful part, the relationship mindfulness, that's when you can chime in with that skill that says, you know what, I don't feel like um, 
this is going so well right now. And you can really be vulnerable and authentic right then, you know, and just say, um, you know, I would hate for this um, to go any further. I don't want to, you to get really upset. I don't want to get upset. So right now, I think I'm going to walk away. And we're going to talk about this later because it is really important that we discuss that. So that's where that mindfulness piece is really important. Um, and you can, you can tell that especially after you express and, you know, you assert or ask for what you want and they're pushing back at you a lot and that broken record's not working, that's where you use that mindfulness, you know, that you're really aware and that's where you, you know, because oftentimes we're looking at it like, oh, why are they doing this? But look at it from their perspective, you know, and then being also mindful of what you're saying too. You know, are you doing something that's triggering them? And that may be, and maybe you're being triggered. So it's, you're the person that really in, in the relationship there should really be that one that makes that decision, if that makes sense. Um, we also had another question. Um, when you're delivering this dear man and you may, let's say, get some pushback, and you say the words, I understand. And that seems to bring up a really heavy emotion. What, is there something you could say or why may you not want to say, I understand? If the, you know. Yeah, the I understand is, although it's, it's validating, you truly don't understand what their situation is there, right? So that, in that respect, you can just say, tell me a little bit more. Tell me, you know, use a curiosity question. Tell me a little bit more about, about how you're feeling about this and kind of switch it up. Um, you know, and you can say that I understand, like in my, my um, particular case, I think it worked, but it doesn't always work. So go to curiosity then. Curiosity is definitely not, and just say, tell me what you're feeling right now. You know, and then you can go from there because that's not going to escalate them at all. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, someone also had a question. Just you had said um, about two people can be right at the same time. The dialectic. Right. If you wouldn't right. mind just explaining that just a little bit more. Right. So, Marsha Linehan says that two people can be right at the same time. You know, so we have, you know, black and white right? So it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't necessarily mean, um, and when you look at it and you approach things that way, then it's less likely to escalate. It makes, you're looking at the relationship more, if that makes sense. So you're, you're looking at, so for instance, I may say something and I see it one way, my daughter says it, sees it the other way. We could both be right because that's, what her reality is. This is what my reality is. Okay. And that's what, what it, that's, what's true for her. And that's, what's true for me. And we're, we're both not wrong because that's what we see. So hopefully that, help, that helps a little bit. Wonderful. Uh, let's see. So we have a question here. Um, does dear man and give fast work when just with a child or is there a power play? So if it's a spouse who's on equal ground with you, can you still do these skills? Oh, absolutely. So mine is just my personal experience, but absolutely it will work. So there's really, there really should be no power with it because all you're doing is describing what the situation is, expressing your feelings, not how they should feel, okay? Asking for what you want, okay? So, and you have that right to ask for what you want, right? So, um, and then just being mindful of their reactions to it, okay? That's where you make that decision. You know, it's working or it's not working. Can you use Dear Man when your loved one... You know, and, can you use dear man when your loved one is not regulated? Um, it depends. So it, 
I would say if it escalates to the point of screaming, that's probably not going to be effective. That's when you have to do so. But I have used it effectively and calmed that um, dysregulation down with the broken record, you know, because they were, you know, she was just, she could hear me finally, you know, and she would calm down. And, and if you can throw in that negotiation piece that says, you know, hey, this is a little bit of a hook. Um, or that reinforced piece that, you know, this is what you're going to get out of it. It may bring it down. But there's, there's a point with all of the skills where safety is key. And, you know, that person's becoming too dysregulated. You got to look at your own safety. So, you know, it, ha it can bring the dysregulation down, but you have to be mindful as to how far. And you know the person you're, you're with probably the best if it's somebody that's that you live with or it's a relative so i would think that um, you would know where that point is and we just have a clarification question here are these used together or separately the dear man dear give and a uh, gift bass okay so dear man is actually um how to ask for you how to ask for what you want and um, the give fast is how to preserve the relationship. So they should really go hand in hand. It's give fast is how to deliver dear man, if that makes sense. So they should be done together. What do we do when dear man does, I guess the question is, does dear man always work? And then the follow up is, what do we do if it doesn't work? No, it doesn't always work. So I, um, and, and what I would say to you is if you're new at it, um, use what Marsha Linehan says. You're doing the best that you can in this moment and you can always try harder, which means that you get up the next day and you try it again. Don't give up on the skill, okay? But you also have to be mindful about the dysregulation, okay? Again, observe your limit with that. Okay, so, but does this work the first time? It didn't work the first time for me, but I practiced it. And one of the reasons that I'm an instructor is because when I teach this to people, it reinforces it for me. So the more you practice it, and I think that's a wonderful idea you guys suggested, that you practice this with people that are not necessarily going to dysregulate, you know, on you right away. Or, you know, just do it with a friend and just say, this is a skill I'm practicing. And then the more you practice it, the more you can do. The other thing you can do is if you have a situation come up, um, back up um, and just write out the dear man as how you would handle, have handled it in that particular situation too. So the next time you might be able to use it more effectively. Okay. That's some really great questions. Um, what is the best way to start a dear man if you are fearful the other person does not like confrontation? Um, so, you know, and you I think, really need the behavior to, you know, you really want right. to work on the behavior. So, I think first, what you have you have to be in a place that you're confident in yourself. And that's one of the things that um, you need to work out, work out, you know, before that. And I think if you can practice this through, even before you approach the person, write it out, practice it in front of the mirror so that you're confident, okay? That's going to make you more confident. The biggest piece here is that you're able to say what you need to say of course the person may shut down okay that's what you're mindful of okay you can go slow talk in a calm manner try to make that eye contact okay but these are all things that you have to practice so um yeah it's scary um and i was scared for a long time to do this but the more you do it the more you practice it the easier it gets you know and don't beat yourself up if it doesn't go well the first time because it is effective um, you know, like I said, the, the skills that I've learned in family connections, 
have been a game changer for me and my whole family. So, you know, I would say don't ever give up on them. And it's, um, that's why they're there. You know, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> so we have um, a question here. Um, about a child who, or a, a teen who has learned about Dear Man, and mm -hmm. every single time the parent tries to use it, mm -hmm. the child knows what the parent is doing and kind of barks back. So what do you mm -hmm. recommend for a parent to do in that situation? That's a great question. That came up actually in my class that I was teaching. So I love that question. Um, what I would say is that's where you're, you be, use your vulnerability. You know, just say, hey, I see that you, that, that you realize I'm trying to do, dear man. Am I being effective at it? You know, have them help you through it because that includes them in it, okay? So, you know what? Talk through all the things and be that vulnerable piece. Um, and it's really effective. It's, a, it's another way to bond, I believe. Can you go through the N? in dear man the describing neg the negotiate negotiate yeah. right so what i said um you know you really have to with this i'm going to back up a little bit this skill is taught towards the end of family connections because you have to have the skills of observing limits validation in relationship mindfulness those are important not that i even had those when i first learned this but it's really helpful if you do so the negotiate piece here is when you're all said and done, is there going to be a game changer that's really going to preserve that relationship? That's when you negotiate. So if I go back to my examples again, I knew my daughter wasn't going to come home from college if I didn't bend something. And I had to look at what is something that's really going to know, make her see that I really want her to come home and it's really important. That was my decision of observing my limit. Um, the thing with the, you know, with the um, app, I realized it was getting late, you know, so you have, you don't even have to negotiate if you don't want to. And there are some things that are not negotiable. You just have to say no. You know, for instance, if, you know, she was um, asking if um, she could do drugs in my house, that's not negotiable with me. You know, I observe my limit. That's where I go to the broken record and you repeat yourself. You're observing your limit there you know, and so you have to choose, and it's different for everybody, what you're going to negotiate in terms of that. Um, but remember when you go into this whole thing that it, the big piece of it is that you want to walk away, not worn out like you've been through a war or that you made it worse for that other person. You want to walk away saying, you know what, I was able to tell them how I feel or say no, and they got that. And I feel good that I was able to communicate that effectively. And that's what this skill is about. That's great. Tina, if you just want to look through and pick out one more question, because we have about two minutes left, okay. I will mention to everyone, we have, I think, about 60 questions that have been posed here, and we've tried to get to as many as we can. Mm -hmm. But we will review the questions and we'll respond. If you um, answered with your name, we will respond to as many as we can, giving you the answer or a link to resources on our website. We are also in the process of planning a webinar. We don't have a date for it yet, which is going to be an ask the expert. So there are a lot of questions that have been posed that are not necessarily related to this specific topic. So we haven't answered them now, but we will put them in our ask the expert webinar, which will be happening um, in the next two weeks. So do I do. Okay. I like this one. How is a dear man give fast different from conflict resolution? So we do have um, problem solving skills that we do in family connections. So we do talk, we do kind of revisit this when we do problem solving and you can use dear man and give fast when you are solving problems as well. It can be used for that, but primarily it's used for just being able to say no effectively or asking for what you want. But in terms of solving a problem, absolutely it can be one of the, the, the pieces that you go to 
but there's other skills that you can also use with that as well that we teach in the class. So. Okay. So, and I would, I would say to everybody in this webinar to register for the webinar on Friday with Dr. Frazzetti. He's a phenomenal speaker. I've been able to meet him in person and, um, you know, it will, it will be a very great um, talk. So I highly recommend it. All right. Allison, thank you so much. Yes. Um, I, I think everyone has really enjoyed this and loved it and loved this and definitely gained a lot of useful information. So I thank you very much for your time and for educating us today and answering our questions. And thank you to everyone who has participated and listened, and we wish you a very good rest of the week. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much. Thank you.